Hello Helen here, welcome to my channel. Today's card or cards I'm going to be using the leftover flowers that I did for the um, two cards out of the one border video that I did last time and I'm going to be making some frames out of mirror, gold mirror card but um, apologies for how it looks on the film, it's really hard to to film it loses all its colour and does all sorts of reflective stuff so apologies for that. So I'm going to start off by making um, four frames, two of each size. So to do that I'm going to use three rectangle nesting dies, you can use whichever dies you might have to do that, doesn't matter what brand. And so I'm going to make one bigger and one smaller and then I'm going to do the same thing again so I've got two of each size. So with lots of fiddling around I got my two sets cut out. Now I'm not totally happy with the, um, the way the nesting rectangles fit together and so to me one end is a lot longer so I'm just going to trim it to make it a little bit more even. Um, a lot just depends on how they um, are made because a lot of them are for um, doing your layers. Um, and I didn't want, I'm using mine for frames. You can get actual frame dies, um, but I didn't have any, so I'm just making do with what I've got.
Now I've gone ahead and stuck the two sets of frames together um, just with a little dob of glue where they cross over. I've just set one slightly offset to the other so it makes a kind of um, almost like a crystal frame like um, the it's all the go at the moment. And now I'm going to um, put some foam tape on the back because I want them just slightly raised off my card. But because they're very narrow, um, it's quite hard to cut the foam tape narrow enough. So my trick is to turn the, the foam tape over and then use a craft knife and just run it down the full length of a piece of craft foam and do the same and just make really thin strips. I find that's much easier than with a pair of scissors that gets all gunked up. Now before I stick my frames down onto my card panels I decided I might do a little bit of ink blending just just kind of like a halo where the flowers are going to go. So I've got my two um, card fronts here and I'm just going to do blending using this new Ulta New um, blending tool um, just to try it out. I've just bought it and I thought oh, I will try it out on this card or these cards. So I'm going to use um, yellow on one and pink on the other. I'm using Distress Inks. I'll have the, all the description of all the stamps I've used for my flowers and all the other products underneath this video and also over on my blog which the link will be in the description below the video. So I'll go ahead and just blend um, quite softly the the two lots of colours on the two front panels. Usually when I do ink blending I use one of the Ranger mini blenders and if I'm not using Strathmore smooth watercolour paper or the Tim Holtz watercolour paper I find I get marks from the, the blending tool but with this tool it actually seemed to be quite seamless so it's great for if you're just using normal card. I highly recommend this this blending tool. Now I did find that I had to wipe it off quite a bit on a paper towel in between doing the two colours because there's quite a bit of ink stayed in the, the bristles. Ideally I would have a different brush for you know each colour range and you wouldn't need to clean it quite so much in between but I only bought the one brush and now they're sold out so um, in time I'll probably get a few more of them so that I can have you know one for yellows, one for pinks, one for blues, one for mauves or something like that. Um, but at the moment I've just got the one so I'm cleaning it in between thoroughly <coughs> and I figured it wouldn't really hurt if there was a little bit of yellow still on the pink. That's why I did the yellow first um, just so that I could um, change to the different colour and it would just make it a sort of peachy colour if there was still some yellow ink but it wasn't too bad.
Now that I've got the blending done, I'm just going to do my sentiment. So I've got it in the misty and I'm going to use the um, acetate grid that I have to just make sure that my stamp's straight. And then I'm going to just place the um, frame where I'm going to have it on the card so that I can sort out where the placement of my sentiment will go. And then once I've got that stuck onto the lid of this misty I can take everything else away and I'll do the same with the second frame which I'm going to do landscape the smaller of the two frames The sentiment stamps I'm using, for the pink one I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Thoughtful Messages and for the yellow landscape one I'm using the Ranger Literate set called Birthday Stamp. Once the stamping was finished I've stuck the card panels onto the card bases so they're really finished now and now I can just stick my frames down and then I can rearrange all the flowers and how I want them.
once I've set out the flowers how I want them I'll use the press and seal method like I did in the last video um, just to hold the arrangement in place while I glue the leaves and the bottom set of the flowers down. Because I've raised the frames up onto foam tape I'm going to have to raise the leaves, any leaves and flowers that are hanging over either side of the frame um, with foam tape as well just to support them and then I'll glue the parts that are going to be touching the frame and then I'll put some foam tape onto the back of the top flower and put that down and I'll do the same for the other arrangement as well. So that's the two cards finished using the leftovers from the last video. I hope you like them. I have all the materials that I've used for including the stamps and things for all these two cards in the description below the video and over on my blog. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Time I'll leave you with some photos of the close-ups of the cards and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.